This video takes a closer look at the SCADAPAC X70 Smart RTU and the RealFlow Flow Computer. We'll look at how the configuration is divided between RealFlow configuration software and Remote Connect, how to license a SCADAPAC X70 for RealFlow, which Modbus project settings are automatically set for RealFlow, and how to access Flow Computer properties using Modbus. Unlike other SCADAPAC Flow Computers, the SCADAPAC X70 must be configured with its configuration software first before RealFlow can communicate with the RTU. In this case, the configuration software is Remote Connect. With previous SCADAPAC Flow Computers, such as the SCADAPAC 350 or SCADAPAC 32, the Flow Computer is a separate C application loaded by RealFlow as part of the Flow Run configuration. With the SCADAPAC X70, the Flow Computer is built into the firmware and just needs to be enabled during configuration. So Remote Connect is used to first enable the Flow Computer as part of the RTU's configuration. Serial ports and IP settings are also part of the RTU's configuration. Instead of adding Remote Connect's configuration pages to RealFlow, these pages remain only with Remote Connect. This separation also avoids potentially writing conflicting data between two applications, RealFlow and the programming environment. Recall for SCADAPAC 32 and SCADAPAC 300 series, when Telepace or SCADAPAC Workbench is used to configure the RTU, the software could overwrite the same communication port settings and protocol settings also written by RealFlow. Let's look at a quick demonstration. If I change the RTU type to a SCADAPAC 334, for example, the RTU configuration settings are included when the real flow configuration is written to the RTU, things like serial port settings and IP settings. But if I select the SCADAPAC 470, these settings are kept separate. Notice how they're grayed out here. With the SCADAPAC X70, real flow and remote connect configure completely different properties and so will not overwrite each other's data. As we saw in part one of this video, Remote Connect is needed first to enable the Flow Computer. RealFlow cannot configure the SCADAPAC X70 until this is done first. Note that this is in contrast to previous SCADAPACs that could be shipped with the Flow Computer loaded and ready to go if connected directly to RealFlow out of the box. You certainly can purchase a SCADAPAC X70 with a Flow Computer license already loaded, but you will still need to use Remote Connect to first enable the Flow Computer before RealFlow can be used. In this example, I'm going to begin with an existing Remote Connect project and enable the Flow Computer. We do this by going to the project settings. Now they're grayed out because I'm online. So I'll go offline and then select the project settings. Here's the application RealFlow Computer. And it says it requires an RTU license. Well, if I want to check that first, how would I do that? Well, to connect to the SCADAPAC X70, I first need to go online. So let's check again online. And on this tab, licensing, I can refresh and see what licensed applications. There are none. To obtain a RealFlow Flow Computer license, contact your Schneider Electric representative to request the RealFlow license file for your SCADA pack. You can apply the license later by selecting additional functions, apply license. It's a file.lic for license. And after applying, I'll need to restart the device to activate the license.
After waiting about 30 seconds, you can refresh the connection and identify the license here. I have five runs licensed. Now, before adding the flow computer to this project, let's have a look at what I have done so far. I've created a project that I hope to have an operator interface terminal talking serial Modbus RTU. Now, the settings for Modbus, Modbus RTU, begin with a default byte order for 32-bit values of the high byte first uh, and the low word. So we've got 3412 is the byte order. Now watch what happens when we enable the flow computer on this existing project with a default byte order. All right, so it says the changes have been made and we can view this log file to see what the complete list of changes are. So looking for the word changed or has changed, the Modbus IP server has been turned on and that's expected because RealFlow is going to need the Modbus protocol to configure the flow computer in the SCADA pack. The other one is that the flow computer has been enabled that we expect and here's this other change. So in the Modbus server, this is both Modbus RTU and Modbus TCP, the order for 32-bit values has been changed from the default of 3412 to this order, 1234. When RealFlow configuration software uses Modbus to share 32-bit values with SCADA pack flow computers, it has always used this byte order, 1234, for this data. Some users may recall that Telepay SCADA packs also use this 32-bit byte order of 1234. While other SCADA packs, including the X70, allow you to select the desired byte order, and they use the byte order of 3412 by default. Therefore, if you're enabling RealFlow in an existing X70 project that already uses the Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP protocol in server or slave mode, then the 32-bit byte order configured for RealFlow will affect these Modbus connections as well. If this applies to your project, you will need to change the 32-bit byte order to 1234 on any Modbus devices that are already polling your SCADA pack. This includes a Modbus operator interface terminal or a Modbus SCADA host connected to the SCADA pack. Note also that this setting change applies to Modbus server mode only. It does not affect your project if it has client or master mode connections, such as those connections using the Modbus scanner or Modbus master function blocks. Let's now look at how flow computer properties are accessed using the Modbus protocol from either a SCADA host or an OIT. In RealFlow, if we look at the help file, under Telebus protocol. These are all the Modbus registers assigned to flow computer properties. The same Modbus register addresses are assigned to the same flow computer properties as in all other SCADA pack flow computers. I'm interested in meter run number one and the instantaneous readings. For example, let's look at the temperature and static pressure. These are located at a floating point register 37, 168, and 170. I'm going to use GeoSCADA. And this is a floating point register, and I'll call it temperature. And if we return to our reading here, 15.8, and we're reading it fine. So if we also wanted static pressure, and 
and that was located at 37,170. Note that as soon as the RealFlow flow computer is enabled, these Modbus registers are assigned to the flow computer properties in the SCADA pack and cannot be reassigned to an object by the user. Let's look at an example in Remote Connect. If I want to also pull the value for my first analog input, I can optionally assign it to a DMP address or a Modbus address. So if I was to choose the same address, 37,168, I see that it's got a highlight here and it says this value is reserved for the real full flow computer. In fact, the whole range of reserved registers is noted here on the side. So I would have to choose a register outside of that reserved range. I also want it to be a floating point register, so I'll just change that here. And here it is summarized here, and I'll write that to my controller. While that's writing, I'm going to go over to our SCADA host and add this additional point. and it's also a floating point. And I'll just change my input to see that it is indeed following. In the next video, we will look at how to access these flow computer registers in a logic program or in the object browser. Looking at what registers are available for objects from the valid range for Modbus, currently all Modbus addresses for flow runs 1 to 10 are reserved in the SCADA pack when the flow computer is enabled, even if all flow runs are not configured. Recall with other SCADA pack flow computers, real flow registers for any unconfigured flow runs can be put to other use in the logic application. This is not the case with the SCADA Pack X70. So if you are porting a logic application from another SCADA Pack flow computer to the SCADA Pack X70, and it includes objects assigned to Modbus registers within this uh, range reserved for real flow, these objects will need to be changed to free registers outside the reserved range. Please note we are currently looking into a method to free up unused addresses for flow runs not configured. However, there are still plenty of free Modbus addresses and the address range can be increased further by enabling six digit addressing. If we look within Remote Connect, under Modbus Server Advanced Configuration, you can enable the six digit addressing. For our object, analog input 1, just correct the syntax for six-digit addressing. And now the number of available registers has dramatically increased, providing over 100,000 more registers when you include both input and holding registers together. If you do choose to enable six-digit Modbus addressing, your SCADA host will also need to support six-digit addressing. So how do you release these registers reserved for the flow computer? For example, if you are using a SCADA Pack X70 as a flow computer, but later decide you want to repurpose the RTU and no longer need the flow computer running on it, then you will need to do a cold boot or factory boot to the RTU to clear the flow history and free up the reserved Modbus registers. Just unchecking the flow computer box in the project settings will not clear the history or free the reserve registers. You must cold boot and or factory boot the X70 to accomplish this. 
This extra step is necessary so that a user cannot accidentally stop or erase the recording of flow history by simply unchecking the flow computer project setting and writing this to the RTU. The next video shows how to view flow computer registers in an object browser, how to use flow computer objects in logic, and using alert notifications to do simple control actions such as a well shut-in.